if we want to find the gradient on this curve, we have a number of choices we could do um, by explicit means. Explicit form is you rearrange the equation so that the variables are separated and you've got y's and x's on separate sides. And that would lead to uh, doing things like y squared as <coughs> 9 lots of 1 minus x squared over 4. And so you differentiate the square root of this function. Achievable, doable, um, it's got bits and pieces going on to it. Second method would be to realise that this is actually a loose. Uh, so the second method um, is you could actually realise this is an ellipse. And if it's an ellipse, the two radii are the denominators of the two parts. So the, radi the x horizontal radius is the square root of 4, and the horizontal uh, vertical 1 is square root of 9, 3. You then wind up with two functions, one which is in terms of t, one in terms of uh, x in terms of t and y in terms of t. The x in terms of t is 2 cos t and 3 sine t. And so you could get gradient by doing dy dx is dy dt divided by dx dt. And you can do those explicitly. There is a third method that's um, useful when you can't identify what curve it is. Or because of the complexity of the mixture of x's and y's over here, you can't explicitly write y in terms of something. And this is a, what's called an implicit form. And the implicit form just says, differentiate everything in place. Each term can be differentiated as it is in terms of x. Just we need to remember that the function y depends on x as well. That does change a little bit what's happening. So when I come to do the differentials, we can differentiate the first term. Uh, so differentiate x squared gives me 2x over 4. That's the differential of x squared dx a quarter of it. And then we come on to the y1, and we can actually differentiate the y1 as well. It's a ninth. The differential of the y squared ending up with a differential of x. And how can we differentiate this y squared function? Well, we can treat it as if it was uh, a chain rule. I can differentiate y squared with respect to y, and then differentiate y with respect to x afterwards. And that's the same value. That allows me to have a uh, differentiate of y squared is 2y over 9. That's this first part. But I don't know what dy dx is, so I do dy dx. And then the third section, do the right hand side, we do the differential of any constant with respect to x is equal to 0. Now the only thing in here that's a real problem for us now is to be able to say, well, let's rearrange this equation so we know what dy dx is. So if I rearrange, I can get dy dx on its own by subtracting half x on both sides and then dividing by 2 ninths of y. Which gives me minus 9x over 4y. And that allows me to then to actually find the gradient of the line. So that's how we can actually differentiate uh, expressions. It has a number of uses. Um, first of all, let's consider what's happening generally. If I have a general case of a function that's y to the n, and I want to differentiate it with respect to x. The general form of this is going to be a chain rule of the dy to the n dy. 
then I need to do dy dx. This is an expression that we want to find eventually. So when we do the differential, we get n y n minus 1 dy dx. And that's the first important result we need. There is a second one, and that's when you've got products going on. Um, there's a whole host of really complex curves that can be drawn uh, where you do the product of x and y. Now they do this as question two. I'll, I'm going to work through it with you. So if I want to do the differential of x and y with respect to x, this is actually a product rule. Let's remember the product rule. We've got two functions, both depending on x, but separately. Two functions, u and v, depending on x, separately. So the product rule says we can do v du dx plus u dv dx. Now, like that's a, the other way around to a lot of people. Don't be surprised. Um, I just do it in this form, so there's the du first and the dv second. It's the same as the quotient form, if you want it that way around. That's the only reason that might look a little odd, or should look any odd to anybody. So if we apply this to here now, so we've got u is my function x, and du dx is 1. And v is my function y, and dy, uh, v, dx, it's just going to be dy dx. We can't differentiate the function itself. But it gives us a general result. We can actually do the product form. I'll just move that back over here a little bit. Just so we've got a bit of clear clarity. And so we go through and we substitute in our values. So v du dx, I've got y times du dx, which is 1, plus u, which is x, dv dx, which is dy dx again. Uh, they write it the other way around, but still y plus x dy dx is an important result when we come through. So the initial versions, just to work through a, uh, one of their examples, put all the product. And we've got the first one we can apply, which is x cubed plus x plus y cubed plus y dy is equal to 6. When we differentiate each term, we're going to get 3x squared. Differentiate the x is 1. Differentiating this y part, differentiate it with respect to y, gives me 3y squared dy dx. And again, we've got to differentiate with y, we get 3 dy dx. And differentiating the constant always gives you a 0. I can now factorise out the dy dx. It's going to have these two terms of it. Let's move the other two to the other side, so I'm minus 3x squared minus 1, and divide by the, the parts I'm going to factorise out here, the 3y squared plus 3. And they decide that they're going to do complete factorise out. There's no benefit to what they've done, and I don't think you would get penalised for not doing this extra factorisation that they've done. They're the same thing, same expressions. Okay, uh, do another quick example.
um, I did a x squared plus which I'll do theirs. So I'll do theirs tomorrow. Okay, I'll do that as a warm up 